the front pages, the photographers, the reporters, all asking the same thing. Is it all over, Prime Minister? The lenses tilt towards Boris Johnson leaving Downing Street, heading for Parliament at lunchtime, and Prime Minister's questions. The difficult questions usually come from the opposition benches. Today, they came from Conservative MPs as well. The Prime Minister constantly tries to deflect from the issue, always tries to blame other people for mistakes, and that at least nothing um, left for him to do other than to take responsibility and resign. Today, I ask him to do the honourable thing, to put the interests of the nation before his own interests, and before, in, in, in his own words, it does become impossible for government to do its job. Does the Prime Minister think there are any circumstances in which he should resign? <laughs> Frankly, Mr Speaker, the job of a Prime Minister in difficult circumstances when he's been handed a colossal mandate is to keep going, and that's what I'm going to do. And when it was the Labour leader's turn, he took aim at those in the Cabinet. Only in office, because no one else is prepared to debase themselves any longer. The charge of the lightweight brigade. <laughs> Have some self-respect. In the middle of a crisis, doesn't the country deserve better yes. than a Z-list cast of nodding dogs? Yeah. Mr Speaker, the, the difference between this government and that opposition is we have a plan and they do not. We're, and we're getting on with it. They want to focus on this type of issue, Mr Speaker. We're going to get on with our jobs. Ian Blackford. The Scottish National Party leader at Westminster is often remorselessly barracked by Conservative MPs. Not today. Let's face it, it's a minor miracle that the Prime Minister has even made it through to Prime Minister's questions and he really ought to see the faces behind him because, Prime Minister, it really is over. The Prime Minister is desperately clinging on to his own fantasy, but the public can't afford to put up with this farce of a government a minute longer. All day, it felt at times like every ten minutes or so, Conservative MPs were sending letters saying the Prime Minister should go. And just take a look at the language chosen by the now former Justice Minister, Victoria Atkins, as she resigned. Values such as integrity, decency, respect and professionalism should matter to us all. I have watched with growing concern as those values have fractured under your leadership. I can no longer pirouette around our fractured values. Are we witnessing the collapse of the government, Mr Javid? And from a letter to a resignation statement from the man who just yesterday was Boris Johnson's health secretary. I call Sajid Javid. Have a look at the body language Mr. of the Speaker, Conservative benches as you listen to Mr Javid's words. Treading the tightrope between loyalty and integrity has become impossible in recent months. And Mr Speaker, I will never risk losing my integrity. And now this week again, we have reason to question the truth and integrity of what we've all been told. And at some point, we have to conclude that enough is enough. Yeah. I believe that point is now. He said he had been patient, hoping things would improve. But I do fear that the reset button can only work so many times. There's only so many times you can turn that machine on and off before you realise that something is fundamentally wrong. And then there was this, a public laser-guided attack on those still in Boris Johnson's cabinet. They will have their own reasons, but it is, it is a choice. I know just how difficult that choice is, but let's be clear, not Doing something is an active decision. I am deeply concerned about how the next generation will see the Conservative Party on our current course. Yeah. Can I say to the House, there will be no more personal statements today. But he was back again down the corridor a few hours later, facing the liaison committee of senior backbenchers. Prime Minister. How's, how's your week going? Terrific. 
Turns out they had been keeping up with the news. It's, it's being reported that there's a delegation of your cabinet colleagues waiting in Downing Street, including the chief whip, the transport secretary and your new chancellor, waiting to tell you when you finish here today that it's time for you to go. How will you respond to that? You're asking me to comment uh, on... This conversation uh, will happen in a few minutes, Prime Minister. You say, you say. Uh, but I, I, I'm not going to give a, a running commentary on political events. Uh, we're going to get on with the government of the country. This morning, the Community Secretary, Michael Gove, went to see the Prime Minister to tell him he thought he should resign. In the last hour, the man who just yesterday sat around Boris Johnson's cabinet table was sacked by him, with a number 10 source describing Mr Gove as a snake. This was the scene in Downing Street this evening. Drivers hanging around while cabinet ministers went inside. Some saying Mr Johnson should go, others saying he should stay. The culture secretary is still supportive. <laughs> Westminster is a postcode defined by power. Today has been defined by it draining away from Boris Johnson. But he's not shifting, at least yet. Well, back here in Downing Street tonight with uh, a pretty big crowd of protesters who gathered uh, just outside the gates on Whitehall. Chris is still with me. Um, Chris, this note of defiance that's come through loud and clear tonight from Downing Street, but at one stage today, People were talking fairly confidently about the Prime Minister actually going. When I was talking to George on the 6 o'clock news, I was anticipating that there was a possibility, nothing more than that, but a possibility that within a couple of hours there might have been a lectern just behind us here with the Prime Minister preparing to come out and, and offer his resignation. And that was an, a view articulated by plenty of Conservative MPs. It hasn't happened because there is that defiance, that determination from the Prime Minister to stick around. And the argument he's making is one that he was making last night as well and we talked about. He's saying, look, there might be 40-odd colleagues who are saying I should resign, but there were nearly 14 million people who voted for the Conservatives led by Boris Johnson at the last general election. That, for him, is his mandate. And what he's saying to his MPs is you can either keep me with a new chancellor and our plan for the economy, they're due to give a speech next week, or you can have a period of chaos around a leadership race and then the prospect, so he says, of a general election that might be sooner rather than later. And he is saying to Conservative MPs, look at the opinion polls, that might mean that the Conservatives are out of power. Crucially though, Hugh, those who want to see Boris Johnson go, they are motivated, yes, by the distaste for many around his character and his attitude, but fundamentally it's because they think they would lose with him as leader. So that's the trade-off that's going on. Boris Johnson saying, if I go, you lose, and them saying to him, if you stay, we lose. <laughs>